Hello, welcome to Acoustic Spotlight, the program that features performers of acoustic music. I'm your host, Rich Petrak. Today's spotlight falls on a singer-songwriter from Orlando, Florida, by way of Montreal, Canada, Serena Young. The United States ranked third in the world in percentage of Must be the new guy. I guess we can say I was with you guys the whole time. New guy. UCF and the Central Florida Research Park have helped create 41,000 jobs and contributed about $3.3 billion to the regional economy. Three, and that's only new girl. So if it seems like your company's growing, it probably is. UCF stands for opportunity. Welcome back to the program. We're here with Serena Young. Welcome to the show, Serena. Thank you, Rich. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Good. Good. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for having me. A thought-provoking song, Living on the Edge. Can you tell us a little a bit about it? Living on the Edge was inspired um, by an observation I made, uh, how people can be extreme in their beliefs, and uh, some are, don't believe in anything. It's cynical about absolutely everything and critical and others are extremely devoted to one thing or another be it you know some spiritual practice or religion and then the, in between you've got people in between who want something to believe in and don't have anything to believe in because they do have a certain amount of cynicism but they do believe in something and they're confused and um, possibly even doubtful and um, this was inspired by having met a man who was very frazzled emotionally and he was saying how difficult it was for him to express that. So I wrote the song from a male perspective, which is not something I do very often, but I did it um, in order to give him a voice and speak for him about this 
position of confusion. And that's what living on the edge is, living on the edge of possibly the truth or possibly a great big lie. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's a nice song. Thank you. Is it something that you had uh, written recently? No, uh, I wrote that a couple of years ago. Um, I think I wrote it just before, I, while I was pulling together the album material. I had a lot of material to choose from. I'm not particularly prolific, but uh, I write in, in spurts, and at that time I had a whole pot of songs to choose from, and that one really stood out uh, in terms of material, and there were many reasons why I put it on the album, um, because it had a different tempo, it uh, also was a male perspective, and, and so even though it had been a rather new song and I hadn't had a chance to road the song as I normally would, I still put it on the album. Well, let's, let's take a minute and just say, how, how did this all begin? How did your songwriting and playing career, how did that come to you? It started a long time ago. <laughs> um, I would say that I've been singing from for as long as I can remember. And my mom tells me that when I was two and a half or so, I was, used to sing on the top of my lungs all the time and, you know, very dramatic little girl with the arms out and, you know, <laughs> standing on the coffee table pretending it was, you know, I'll give away my age a little bit by saying Sonny and Cher were just starting off, or maybe not just starting off at the time, but their show was on, and I used to just, you know, I, that was me up there, you know. <laughs> so um, I started very young, but mostly as a vocalist. The guitar came a lot later, and um, I had a guitar as a teenager, but not much attention span, you know, so sure. I learned a few chords and put it down and maybe twice a year I'd pull it out and play You Are My Sunshine or something on there at the kitchen table. And, um, but then five years ago, I, when I moved to Orlando, I, I pulled out the guitar and I said, I, I'm going to learn this. And I had an old student guitar and my uh, husband said, that's too crap. You can't play with that. You can't be seen in public with that. And I said, that's okay. I'm too discouraged to play it. It's just too hard. And so uh, he bought me a present and he said, you know, if you're going to do it, do it right. And I've been using it to write ever since. Now your, your husband's a musician also, right? Yes. He's yeah. a saxophone player and a very fantastic uh, composer and arranger and he inspires me with his knowledge. He almost overwhelms me sometimes with his knowledge and it's great that our, our perspectives are so different. He, he ins He's instinctive but he's also very educated. I'm completely instinctive and, and I write from a place of instinct and a different, complete different style too so that we can stay married. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good to have the support oh, you know, yeah, for absolutely. each other too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because it is a particular breed. Musicians yeah. are a particular breed. You know, you get up at two, three in the morning, and oh God, God, so I got to write something down. Right. You know, and you're off recording. You know, at any time of day or night, and you know. Sure. You were born and raised in Canada. Yeah, right? I'm from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Okay. Now, for proof of that, could you please say the word about? <laughs> I've been here for five years. Don't forget. <laughs> I think um, when I talk to my friends back home. They say about. <laughs> about. <laughs> I've been here, I think, five years, and now I say about. <laughs> I don't know if there's a difference there, but. So really, until you came to Florida is when you really started the process of songwriting and playing, you know, more serious on the guitar. And well, songwriting had been something I had been doing for a while, and um, but I would write a cappella or I would work with other musicians and I mm -hmm. would tell them I would sing the melody and right. and I would tell them you know these are the chords that I hear and I would you know let them fool around with it and until I would hear something that I like and I would say that you know what mm -hmm. is that it's a G and I would write it down but um, yeah when I moved here I had a lot of time on my hands I didn't know anybody and um, so yeah I picked up the guitar and I had seven eight hours a day to practice and I did it was too hot for me anyway. Right. I was just sweating to death. <laughs> so, you know, the guitar was a great companion. You just stay, uh, stay inside, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I got here in May, and then I stepped out of the house sometime in September. <laughs> so when it started to cool off just ever so slightly. Well, speaking of the guitar, will you uh, take it out and, and uh, play another one for us? Absolutely, with pleasure. Okay, and what, what will you play? Um, I'll play a song that is not on my Sparrows album. Uh, this is a rather recent write. It's called All This Talk, and it's as close to political as 
I've gotten so far. And um, another song, which is the secret title track of the album, is called Something to Hold On To. Um, and that, uh, that was the, actually the song that inspired me to finally sit down and put together an album. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, we'll be right back in a minute, uh, and Serena will uh, we'll do another song for us. Greatness doesn't care how early it is, or how late. Greatness doesn't care if anyone's watching. Greatness doesn't care about your clothes, your hair, or your music. The only thing greatness cares about is getting an opportunity. Where will you get yours? At UCF, we believe no dream is too big and no goal out of reach. On the fields, the courts, and in the classrooms, UCF stands for opportunity. up with it all but I fear I must be slipping there's some things I don't get at all cops in the backyard next door digging up kindergarten grave in the neighborhood watch signs are up I guess I should be safe my oh my what a mess in all this talk of progress Hesitate to help a man, a good deed can land you dead With all them guns out on the prowl and my, my own wheeze likes instead Nothing like the news to keep me straight, stirring up wrongs and rights Before I lay me down to sleep, I lock myself in tight My, oh my, what a mess In all this talk of progress This talk of progress. I don't want to hear any more pedaling uphill backwards while the hunger grows and the anger shows and the blood still flows while they dig up bones. My, oh my, what a Nothing's new, in fact, nothing has changed. I go to work, come home, and repeat, repeat day after day. And my weeks resemble barren desert dunes, and I'm stressed. 
stranded without hope of rescue. I don't know why I call you as often as I do. But everything I know about you tells me not to. But then you speak to me so gentle. You give me something to hold on to. Scattered all about, it believes it's satisfied, but we both know it's not. I don't know why I call you as often as I do. But everything I know about you tells me not to, but then you speak to me so gentle. You give me something to hold on to. Give me something to hold on to. Yeah. Something to hold on to. Something to hold on to. Something to hold on to. The new UCF College of Medicine will help Florida get all the doctors it needs. But until then, be extra careful. UCF stands for opportunity. Welcome back to Acoustic Spotlight, I'm here with Serena Young. Serena, all this talk, you mentioned that was a political song. What, what drove you to write that? You know, for, for the longest time, I never mixed music with politics. And I guess I'm not really a political kind of a performer or even politically minded person in general. But I uh, decided to write something that I had no intention of really putting out there. I just thought, I, I feel like expressing something. And um, I had been watching the news and, you know, it's so depressing. <laughs> you turn on the news, it's just one terrible thing after another. And then at the same time, there was so much talk about how much progress we're making. And as a civilization, uh, as a, you know, the human race, how, we, you know, we're in space, we're, we're doing all kinds of stuff. And there seems to be kind of a dichotomy there you know, there's, we're making progress on all these fronts, and then on the basic human needs front, nothing's changed really in the last, who knows, millennia. You know, there's still people starving, there's still, you know, there's a lot of hardship and a lot of unfairness and a lot of danger and all of that. So, um, that's why I wrote all this talk, because that's what it is, it's a lot of talk, because it just sort of evens out. I feel like we're not going anywhere in some ways. Right without being completely, you know, negative about it. Uh, there just seems to be two steps forward and one step back on a human level. So I wrote it, and I liked it enough to put it on the, the, my next album. It's among the slides. It's in the pot. <laughs> now, you have released one, Disc Sparrows. And I've released uh, two discs, actually. Oh, two. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, that's okay, because the first disc is a little bit obscure. Um, I, I sold out, and I for the moment have decided not to repress it. Um, probably one day in the future I will, 
just for now I decided not to I really uh, it's a little bit different from 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 sparrows in that um, it takes more the, the first album is a little bit more of a rock and roll approach and I was still figuring out what I wanted to do in music and so it's a mishmash of a lot of different styles it's eclectic and I really like it um, but I uh, like Sparrows a lot more and so this is a, the album that I'm promoting a lot more and uh, it, it does seem to prelude the next, the direction I'm going in. And people can find more out about that by going to your website? Absolutely, right? yes. And that website is? It's my name, it's www.serenayoung.com. And that also will show, uh, give you a little bit more. I mean, I've been on there. I've seen some, yeah, uh, get some, some more information about yourself. Yeah, and, a little bit of history. I have some sound clips there so you can hear the other, you know, the other songs that are on there and yeah, get an idea of who I am and what I do. And I wanted to ask you, you mentioned as a child you started to uh, sing a lot. Did you, uh, you know, through your, through your childhood uh, take voice lessons? Or yeah, I did. did. Actually, I took three years of classical training. Um, Hated it, hated it. But that I did that because when I was 13, I had uh, entered a um, school variety show type of thing. I overpracticed, developed very serious nodes on my vocal cords, and was given the option of an operation and six months of silence and three months of, you know, vocal therapy, with the possibility of never being able to speak or sing again, mm -hmm. or a year of silence. So I took the year of silence. I absolutely shut up for a year, which is hard for a teenager wow. to do, you know, especially when you want to mouth back. <laughs> but um, yeah, I took the year of silence. Then I went for a few months of voice therapy and I asked the therapist, what do I need to do? I'm gonna sing. And she said, well, classical training will teach you how to protect your voice. And so I did it. And um, I am very grateful that I did because I've never had trouble with my voice again since then. And uh, although I do have that background, I don't sing classically, but I know what I'm doing. I can feel, I have an awareness of my throat and my, my vocal mechanism while I'm singing so that I, I, I'm enough aware of it that I won't damage my voice. I, I know how to use it properly now. And uh, I'm very grateful I did that. <laughs> Well, you sound beautiful. Thank you. I really do enjoy singing, and I do enjoy performing and writing. It's something yeah. I'll do until I'm, you know, too old to make any sound. <laughs> <laughs> and there'll be another year of silence. <laughs> and then there'll be another year of silence or more. <laughs> uh, that's good. Well, Thank before you. that all that occurs, <laughs> would you, uh, would you please grace us with uh, one more? Yeah. How about uh, another song that I'm planning for my. Uh, next album. Um, this is called Drive and uh, Upbeat and uh, a little bit more of my rock and roll roots into this one. We'll be right back with uh, Serena and Drive. When JetBlue chose Orlando for its new flight training center, the presence of UCF strongly influenced their decision. The results? An investment of $160 million and 150 new jobs. UCF stands for opportunity. Well, that's it for today's program. I'd like to thank Serena Young for stopping down and I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Serena's gonna take us out with one more song We'll see you again next time on Acoustic Spotlight. Last I saw you were on the run Heading into the setting sun The windows down And the music loud in your car Reckless demon you can be. You'll take anything you think is free. When the sorrow hits, you come crashing down like a shooting star. Don't you know it's always been your way to hit a ride on the wind at the first sign of rain? 